We have a new contender in the LLM arena from none other than Ant Group, where the new Ling One T model is competing against other state of the art models. What's really interesting about the new Ling One T is that it's a huge risk taker in demonstrating new ways to train the model. The Ling One T model is a one trillion parameter model with an intentional architectural decisions and training methods, and I'm going to walk through why this model is an important milestone in the AI industry. And my goal here is to condense complex topics in AI into a digestible way while keeping broad AI in mind. Let's start with reasoning models. Ever since the success of reasoning models in 2024, a lot of state-of-the-art models have opted to use reasoning models to produce higher quality tokens. And while reasoning models have certainly demonstrated their superiority compared to non-reasoning models, it often required more compute since it needed to produce more tokens to reason and search the optimal path for answer. But what if instead we train the model with high quality reasoning data and keep the model as a non-reasoning model. And Group's new Ling One T is a demonstration of this type of decision where out of the 20 trillion tokens of training data that it used for pre-training, over 40% of the data was reasoning traces of high quality data that shows examples of how to reason through different tasks. And the model is able to demonstrate strong reasoning steps that generate answers like this. The prompt that I sent to Ling One T was, if all cats are animals and some animals are dogs, does that mean some cats are dogs? And as you can see, even though the model isn't technically a reasoning model, it acts like one since near majority of the training data was conditioned for the model to reason as it tries to generate the answer. In other words, one of the main points that Ling One T model is trying to demonstrate is essentially lowering the cost of reasoning. So basically spending less tokens to reason well. And you might be thinking, wait, if Ant Group's aim is to demonstrate efficiency, how come the model is 1 trillion parameters? Doesn't a 1 trillion parameter model imply that the model is bloated? Even though Ling One T is a trillion parameter model, which is certainly beyond consumer grade hardware, it maximizes on what's called Ling's scaling law, which aims to measure the optimal scarcity of the model. In other words, given a 1 trillion size model that could be a dense model, which means all of the weights are activated per token, employing a mixture of experts would change a dense model into what's called a sparse model, where only certain portions of the entire model is activated. But the question is this, given a trillion parameter model, how many experts should we actually assign? Should the trillion parameter model be divided into thousand experts with only 10 activated at a time or a hundred? How do we know the optimal ways of dividing the models and activating only a certain portion? Ling's scaling law addresses this exact conundrum and proposes the upper bound to the number of experts. And it states, that you start to see diminishing returns for splitting a model beyond a certain point. And the conclusion suggested that if you go beyond 256 experts, you start to get diminishing returns on scarcity. So following this discovery, Ling One T has in total 256 experts with one out of 32 activation ratio, which means that for each token, it will have only eight experts activated instead of the entire one trillion parameter model. This means that even though the model is one trillion parameters in size, inference is only at 51 billion parameters activated for each token from the eight experts that are activated. And this type of setup is becoming more popular in LLMs with the obvious benefits in cost, speed, and memory from inference. For example, if I sent the prompt, make an e-commerce site that is modern and slick. You can see that the model had a low latency of around one second and processed my 19 input tokens and generated 6,903 output tokens to create a site that looks like this. And the inference to generate these tokens are efficient because of the efficient sparse model that linked one t demonstrated from the optimal scaling law proposed in the mixture of experts. And since Ling one t is a non-reasoning model, the inference cost is also extremely low and predictable since compute needed for reasoning is not needed. As you can see, the aim here is to demonstrate the efficiency of reasoning. I tasked the model with this question. The warehouse has 20 items in the current inventory. The purchase invoice that has $10 that accounts for four items in 2024 and no purchases have been made since then. The purchase invoice that had $5 that accounts for two items in 2023, and purchase invoices before 2023 have been lost due to fire, so that no record of the prices before then. Total sales for the product was five items. For missing purchase invoices, assume the latest cost in the oldest purchase invoice you can find. For LIFO, use the newest available purchase invoice. So what was the cost of goods for the product in FIFO and LIFO respectively? 
As you can see, the prompt that I sent to Ling1T isn't a simple math question, but rather requires reasoning since all the variables aren't available at first hand. In other words, you have to calculate multiple steps to smaller answers first to get the final answer that it needs since they're missing invoices that would change the cost of goods for the sales. And as you can see, even though the model isn't a reasoning model, it reasons like a reasoning model as part of its inference. And here's where we have something more exciting. The training method that Ling one team model used showed strong innovation from Ant Group by introducing a new way of post-training the LLM called LPO. Let's do a quick review on the post-training process when it comes to aligning a large language model. Post-training is where you find what's called reinforcement learning, where we allow the model to use what they learned during pre-training to start making real life actions. So the 20 trillion tokens of training data that was fed into Ling1T during pre-training, post-training is a step where you allow the model to start taking actions given its knowledge. So the entire goal for the post-training method is to align the model for specific behavior that we want to see. In the past for post-training, we used to have what's called PPO, which used an actor critic architecture where you had to essentially load various models to align the model based on what the critic model would deem as good or bad responses from the pre-trained model. But since then, we've had progressive evolution in post-training methods like GRPO and GSPO, where each iteration aims to make this alignment process more efficient, more effective, or both. The Ling1T model poses a new method in the post-training method called LPO, or Linguistics Unique Policy Optimization. The goal behind this new method is this. Instead of treating the model's action by each token or complete sequence, which is what GRPO and GSPO tried to do, LPO aims to align the model by sentences. For example, if I ask the model with the prompt, explain why the sky is blue in one paragraph. This is the type of response that we see in Ling1T. And as you can see, the answer provided here is pretty solid. And the LPO alignment would reward the model on per sentence structure, whereas previous methods like GRPO and GSPO would reward the model at per token level or the entire sequence at once. And the assertion being made here is that this type of alignment on a per sentence reinforcement learning yields in better and faster alignment, as you can see from this chart that they have shared. Previous to LPO, GRPO operates at a token level, meaning each token is used to update the gradient when it deviates outside of the clipping range for that specific token. Whereas GSPO operates at a bigger scope at a sequence level where the entire generated sequence is treated as an action and the product of all tokens in a sequence is used to apply gradient updates based on that. And while GSPO certainly made a lot of sense compared to GRPO, where the model can now be rewarded on a global goal completion since it looked at the entire sequence instead of whether token by token it's making the right steps, LPO aims to break this down into a somewhat middle ground where it breaks down into linguistic units where the goal is to judge the model's coherence on the per sentence basis to measure their semantics. DeepSeek R1 back in December 2024 used GRPO for their post-training method and the Quen3 series in mid-2025 used GSPO as their post-training method. And now, Ant Group's new Ling1 T model proposes a new method called LPO that aim to add more stability and effectiveness over the previous methods that we used in post-training. And this type of innovation that we're seeing from Ant Group's new model is signaling that this could potentially be the next recognized way of aligning the model for more efficient and more effective post-training. And if you're interested in trying this model, feel free to check it out on Zenmux.